coming up on Cronkite News, Arizona has had some crazy weather lately, and across the state, people have been affected. We give you tips on staying safe. Also, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol have encountered a record number of migrants this year. We go over what this means for us in Arizona. Plus, Phoenix has awarded grants to boost the food system. I'll have more on how that money is being used. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Luke Chatham. And I'm Brianna Garcia. Thank you for joining us. There have been at least two fires reported over the weekend that have crews hustling to keep up. The Big Sandy fire started Saturday night near Wikiup. It is a wind-driven fire that has created multiple fire spots and consumed 75 acres. While there is no danger to any roads at this time, 20 people have been evacuated. Now the committee fire was reported Friday afternoon near Sedona and was most likely caused by lightning. The fire has grown because of wind, but no evacuations or advisories have been given as of today. We are feeling the effects of previous fires this week. Ian Sachs joins us now from the Weather Center to tell us about flooding in scar areas. Recent wildfires like the Pipeline Fire have left some areas scarred and flooded. Flagstaff is one of the areas hit the hardest. Governor Doug Ducey has ordered the Arizona National Guard to Coconino County to help with sandbagging efforts. The goal is to have 600,000 sandbags filled up by Friday. And the National Weather Service is warning of more severe weather today, including flash flooding. High winds during the storm's Sunday night knocked down power lines, resulting in outages across the state. SRP says more than 106 distribution poles were knocked out in the storm. Heavy winds, downed trees, and rain damaged lines left more than 71,000 APS and SRP customers without power. As of late this afternoon, utility companies were still working to restore power to hundreds of customers. And we're not out of the woods yet. Still rain chances both tonight and into tomorrow evening. I will have your full forecast later in the show. U.S. Customs and Border Protection is showing a record number of encounters with migrants. Cronkite News reporter Julio Mora Rodriguez helps us better understand these numbers. Recently released numbers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection show over 1.74 million migrants have been encountered on the southern border since October. The number of people attempting to enter the country peaked in May when over 240,000 were encountered by law enforcement. Those numbers decreased in June to just over 207,000. When looking at demographics compared to last year, there has been an increase in single adults trying to cross the border. Over 70% of migrants crossing this fiscal year fell into this category. There has also been a decrease in families trying to cross the border this year. They accounted for 23% of all encounters last year. It was 27%. Minors encountered also fell to only 6% of all migrants compared to last year's 8%. At the Google touchscreen, Julio Mora Rodriguez. Native nations across the country were disproportionately affected by the pandemic, and recently clean water and infrastructure have become issues as well. The Navajo Nation will now see some relief. On Friday, Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez signed a more than $1 billion funding agreement with the Navajo Nation Council. This funding package comes from federal pandemic relief funds. The money will help improve water sanitation, housing, and communications infrastructure. More electricity, COVID-19 mitigation, and high-speed internet are also priorities. According to the American Red Cross, every two seconds someone in the U.S. needs blood or platelets. Donations in the summer always dip, but right now everyone is being urged to donate. In June alone, the Red Cross saw a 12% decrease in donations. On average, the Red Cross needs to collect 13,000 donations every day to support 2,500 hospitals across the nation. A number of factors contribute to this dip every year, like people going on vacation or schools being unavailable to host blood drives. Coming up after the break, we dive into farming and how Phoenix is working to improve the food system and support sustainable farming methods. And later, we'll introduce you to a Phoenix so rising soccer star who's making an impact a long way from home.
Yeah, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. We're chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. And the arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Over the past two years, you may have noticed various shortages in foods you like. The city of Phoenix is trying to find solutions to those shortages. They awarded seven organizations with the Agri-Food Tech Innovation Grant to work on innovative and sustainable food supply practices. I talked to two of those organizations to see exactly how they'll help. One solution to the food shortages, have people grow their own food. Lear makes gardens that use technology, are easy and sustainable so more people will want to grow their own food their signature piece, the Lear Garden. So the idea is that we create uh, like a, a full complete system that's gonna make, uh, take care of as many of the um, uh, tasks of agriculture as possible. By using a composting system, the plants are healthier and last longer. The system also reuses water for conservation. And the gardens are small enough to be placed in most backyards. We still have really, really large backyards and it's enough that if somebody wanted to build a small garden, they could supplement their food, take a little bit of the stress off of the food system. Growing food in gardens like these Lear Gardens allows the food system to be healthier and more sustainable. That means the next step is bringing those same attributes to food transportation. With the city grant, Fresh Cube wants to create a new transportation system for small farmers. We're going to have something that we're going to uh, to give to this uh, small set of, uh, of, of uh, farmers so that they can take the product to the, to the markets. Although still a prototype, the idea is to create six mini containers to carry produce, track things like temperature and humidity, and protect crops during transportation. You are going to be able to put your, uh, your uh, crop as, so, as soon as possible into, the, into what we call the cold chain. This will all be controlled by the Central Driving Unit, or CDU, powered with alternative energy. We're going to be able to, uh, uh, to, to maximize the efficiency of, the, of that in such, a, in such a way that we don't have to use fossil fuels. The cubes are built in a Lego-like structure to allow multiple farmers to transport their product. One is to build this into a system that, uh, that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of growers can benefit from. Operators, so this is you can purchase Lear Gardens now, and Fresh Cube mini containers hope to be on the road in the next six months. We know that monsoon season is finally picking up here in Phoenix. Let's hop over to the Weather Center to check back in with Ian Sachs about what we can expect for the week.
Well, it's a typical mid-July scorcher. Let's take a look at high temperatures across the country for tomorrow. It's going to be 80s and above for just about everywhere in the country, except two locations, Los Angeles, 73, San Francisco, 68. Here in State 48, we're not getting anywhere close to that 68 degree reading. It's going to be 112 in Phoenix, 100 in Sedona, 85, the cool spot in Flagstaff, but still well above that 68. Talk about your day planner now, and it'll be 95 when you wake up at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Get a little bit of cloud cover as you get into the middle portion of the day, but it'll still be 111 at 5 p.m. Meanwhile, let's look ahead to the rest of the eight day forecast. Tomorrow will be 112. Wednesday, we repeat that 112 again. Thursday and Friday, both coming in at 114. We do see the temperatures tick down a little bit on the weekend, but they come with a 20% chance of rain. In the Cronkite News Weather Center, I'm Ian Sachs. I'm Kyle Betts. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. The Diamondbacks had the second overall pick in last night's MLB draft. We'll tell you about the star prospect that they took. Let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. We're chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the balance. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Welcome back to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Kyle Betts. The 2022 MLB Draft kicked off in Los Angeles yesterday, and with the second overall pick, the Diamondbacks selected high school prospect Drew Jones. Jones was the Gatorade High School Player of the Year in Georgia last season finishing with a batting average of over 500 after leading his team to a state championship. Some consider Jones the top prospect in the draft, even above first overall pick Jackson Holiday. Jones is the son of former big leaguer Andrew Jones, a five-time All-Star and 10-time Gold Glove winner with the Atlanta Braves. Like his dad, Drew Jones is seen as a phenomenal defender in the outfield whose glove might be his greatest strength. There were several other Arizona connections at the top of this year's MLB draft as well. Termar Johnson, another high school prospect out of Georgia, went fourth overall to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Johnson is an ASU baseball commit. He will likely sign with the Pirates and jump straight to the pros. But his attachment to the Sun Devils is still seen as a major win for head coach Willie Bloomquist. Two picks after Johnson, the Miami Marlins selected Jacob Berry from LSU. Berry is a Queen Creek native who played his freshman year at the University of Arizona before following head coach Jay Johnson to Baton Rouge. Phoenix rising forward Greg Hurst is finding success in the desert. As Cronkite News reporter Ethan Ryder tells us, he's a long ways from where it all started for him. Greg Hurst feels at home in Arizona. 
Since signing on in January, the Phoenix Rising forward quickly settled in as one of the top scorers on the team. The most fun I've had, to be honest, um, just the standard of training every day. It's making me improve, which is uh, the most important thing. Finding his comfort zone in the desert may come as a surprise for a player who grew up in Scotland, but his experience playing for multiple club teams has been an advantage. He was at training or playing football nearly every day of the week for, since he was a young age. His impressive play had him picked up by a team in the top league of Scotland, but the travel that came with it wasn't easy. He was traveling some not very good roads to, to some of the, the venues that were going to training. And we were kind of sitting in the house waiting for him to come through the door. But a young Hurst never found his footing with that team. Continuously being loaned out left him frustrated and with a decision to make. I was playing part time after I got released from full time, and you know I wasn't really sure if I wanted to keep playing. I wasn't enjoying it, so I thought, you know, if something comes up for a fresh start, then I'll, I'll have a go at it. And luckily enough, uh, I got the chance to come to America. The change in hindsight was the right decision, but it didn't always feel that way. I think the first couple of days, I just wanted to go home. Uh, you don't know anybody, and it's, it's a it's a big jump and it's a big step to take. His teammates and coaches helped him to feel at home, but the support from his family, who virtually packed his bags for him, was also a big help in finding eventual success with the Rising. But what really for me sets him apart is his feet and how soft his feet are, his skill in the box and how quickly he can get a shot off. Uh, these are talents that we don't see very often in this country. While he honed his soccer skills growing up in Scotland, Hurst is finding the confidence to use them in America, feeling more and more at home in the desert. But it's now he walks, mm -hmm. you know, with a really straight walks back, tall, yeah. walks tall, and he's he's got a, a smile now. You know, it's a, a, a genuine smile. Um, he, he just loves it. In Phoenix, Ethan Ryder, Cronkite News. The Phoenix Mercury saw their four-game home winning streak come to a halt yesterday as Phoenix fell to the Atlanta Dream 85-75. to But there was one pretty cool highlight. At the end of the third quarter, Mercury guard Shea Petty launched a heave from just beyond half court, and it was nothing but net, which sent the crowd into a frenzy. The basket pulled the Mercury within one entering the final frame. It felt good. I usually make them sometimes in, in practice, so I knew which way to go, but it did feel good. I'm glad it went in. That's why we practice those half court shots, so we can make them there. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Shea hasn't necessarily been shooting well the last couple of games, so it's great to see her back on track doing that. As school students enjoy their break, they may also be taking part in a summer reading program. One suggestion, a book from a young author and athlete here in the Valley. Crockett News reporter Benjamin Garcia has more on a former Chaparral lacrosse player turned published author. Chaparral senior Zachary Ostrowski picked up lacrosse three years ago, quickly developing an IQ for the game, but it's his acumen off the field that makes him stand out. So I think with lacrosse, you get the lax bro mentality is a big thing, especially on the East Coast. You're just the bro with long hair and you're just a you know, big frat bro, basically. Seeing that and like hearing everything he was about, I made sure not to use big words around him in case I used them wrong. <laughs> but, you know, it was really nice to see that he's a hardworking athlete. Ostrowski certainly has found a way with words. At just 14, he became an author of a science fiction novel, The Uncontrolled. And at age 16, he published the sequel to that novel, a hollow world. I couldn't keep all these ideas to myself. I had to let everybody know about them. So I ended up writing these novels. I ended up starting off with a few chapters. And then, of course, you know, I was 10 years old, so I was very antsy. Uh, and, but when I was 12 years old, I could actually sit down and think for more than a second. And that's when I was able to get my thoughts together and compile a story that a lot of people liked. The hobby has turned into an asset on the field for Ostrowski. From using the skills it takes to write a book into how he attacks opposing defenses on the field, all while gaining high praise from his teammates. During plays, for example, you could just tell he's mapping out each, each and every move. He's trying to figure out where everyone's going and like his vocabulary on the field. He's always like, could I please have the ball or something? He's super nice, super sweet guy. Ostrowski hasn't just used his talents of reading and writing on the field, but off the field as well. By going to different elementary schools, Ostrowski speaks with children about the importance of reading and writing and inspiring them to use those skills to chase their own dreams. Being a children, a child celebrity has shown me um, how important it is to keep on inspiring the youth because all, I know all these kids that I'm speaking to and then they're getting older and older and then they're gonna start using what I taught them in their later lives. 
Ostrowski has his goals set high as the author looks to get into schools such as Harvard or Brown to study astrophysics. In Scottsdale, Benjamin Garcia, Cronkite News. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Luke. Coming up, we tell you about one nonprofit who wants to bring horses to the people and how their vaulting program isn't just bringing people together, it's giving them a place to belong. Okay, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a kicked out every single time. This is a real-life story of a real-life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. A couple in Santan Valley takes their passion for equestrian vaulting to help people in need. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Blank shows us the work done at Salt River Vaulters. Some people have a way with horses. And horses definitely have a way with people. I can see that they just have an instant change sometimes. They get up on a horse and they're having full-blown conversations with the horse. Um, they're happy and it's just amazing to see sometimes an instant change in students. Jared Salas and Kadria Musina Salas run Salt River Vaulters, the first and only equestrian vaulting organization in the state of Arizona. A popular sport in our native country, Russia, the founders wanted to bring the joy of vaulting to the valley. I want to share the horses and my knowledge and my instructor's knowledge to help them because I think everyone can benefit from it. Equestrian vaulting's gymnastics on horseback. Um, so there's a lot of moves that incorporate the gymnastics, doing splits and stands and different things on, on the back of a the horse. Their students vary in age and ability, but giving everyone an opportunity to work with the horses is central to Salt River's mission. I came from boarding schools when I was younger and horses really helped me with some emotional issues I had. So I think being able to offer horses to people that may not be able to necessarily afford horses is really important to me. While Jared and Kadria love teaching vaulting and expanding the sport, the organization has a deeper meaning. Salt River Vaulters offers therapeutic lessons to kids and adults with disabilities, which completes their mission of sharing their horses with everyone. I love helping the um, kids with disabilities. I think it's probably my favorite thing. They just have just a joy with them that they bring to lessons. It makes my day every time. It's just a great feeling. You should, you know, love people no matter what. And it doesn't matter what culture, religion, or abilities. And kind of vaulting combines all of it. It's one way how you can unite people with huge differences. And I love it. For student Allison Ward, Salt River vaulting has made a huge impact. The 16-year-old has a sensory processing disorder and autism. 
She recently struggled to get dressed and go to school until she started working with the horses. For me, it's and for Allison, it's been life changing because um, from the moment she stepped foot on the property and was able to connect with the horses, we've been able to go to school and we've been able to get dressed and we've been able to function at a typical level. So it's been life changing. Me and my coach have become really close since and I've only known her for two months and we're really close. And then I'm really close with the horse Jewel. She's my favorite. Salt River Vaulters became a nonprofit organization in 2020 because their purpose extends beyond money. It's providing a home for people who need a sense of belonging. I like to share our horses. I like to share our place with people who really need it. Because a lot of people, they can't find their place in life and they're really struggling. But I want them to know that they're always welcome here. At a place where people have a way with horses and horses have a way with people. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.